Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Ace Service a video here today. There's a brand new video how to create your very own clean thumbnails within Photoshop. So hopefully by the end of today's video here today, whether if you're a creator and or designer, whether you know your client or you're the Yep, regardless, whoever you guys are, you guys will learn something, learn it, and hopefully to have a little bit of fun, have a lot more confidence going to the program, just doing it yourself. So, with that being said, we're going over basically kind of cutting out your photos, making them high quality, color correction tips, and just other general things and tips, ideas that you can go ahead and uh, use and learn. So, enjoy today's video, and uh, that's it, enjoy. Okay, so let's break this down. 1920 by 1080 is the document size that I like to use with 300 resolution. To start, I want to highlight the idea of understanding color correcting your backgrounds and your game photos. For my example, I chose a generic photo that had a cool landscape with a blue sky also showing, given these types of photos are generally the trend for gaming thumbnails. Now going over to filter, camera raw filter, this will be your best friend in color correction. When the window pops up, this button here also helps you guys see before and after while you're editing as well. A few things I love to do in general settings is up the highlights a little bit while also lowering the shadows, just so I can help some contrast in the actual photo. Even sometimes messing with the whites and blacks where normally white actually helps brighten up the skies or even whites to help suppress the brightness of skies. Then under color mixer, you can change the saturation, the luminance, and even change the hue of certain colors. For me, I chose blue to mess around with to hit the sky, where I can actually find a lot of value with changing the colors of the blue just because it makes it pop a little bit more. You can apply even more saturation or luminance to any color that you guys see fit, but this just alone helps the background stand out from normal backgrounds that you see often. Keeping in mind as well, if you do use the same backgrounds roughly, of course maybe you have the same game that you play normally on your YouTube channel, you can click these three dots right here to save your color correction as a preset. Then you can go ahead and load it up later to save you guys a lot of time. Now all you have to do is press OK to exit, and now this is your background to actually start off with when you're making your thumbnail. Next thing I want to go over is working with your webcam photos in your thumbnails. Keeping in mind, I'll be using a real life photo of myself, but of course, if you guys need to, you can swap this out for a game character or something else. Either way, my tips here should definitely help you guys boost the quality of the photos that you guys choose to use. Might I say the stronger the reaction for the face in the thumbnail, probably the higher clicks you'll probably end up getting. So one, cutting out your photos doesn't have to honestly take forever. If your photo is in focus, you can press W on your keyboard to bring up the magic wand tool which then brings up the option on the top to click Select Subject. Here, Photoshop makes a selection based on the objects that are in focus, so hopefully that's your body or your face in the actual picture. Keep in mind, if the photo itself isn't 100% clear and focused on you, your selection might need adjustments. Now, to do so, all you have to do is press Q on your keyboard to enter Quick Mask Mode, where here you can use a black brush to erase and a white brush to fill in. Basically, anything in red will be deleted and anything in the clear view will not be deleted. So if you have areas that select subject did not pick up, you can fix these spots and exit quick mask mode by pressing Q once again. Then to finally cut it out, all you have to do now is press the layer mask option and it'll cut it out perfectly for you. Now you probably guessed it, but once you've actually cut out your photos, you want to go to your layer and make it a smart object. Then after you make it a smart object, you want to jump into your filter, camera roll filter once again. Here, my favorite things to actually do to help the quality of the photo, if it's not the best, is work with the shadows and the highlights to help balance the photo. So when you combine flirting with these shadows and blacks, with also putting up your texture and your clarity options under the basic settings, you can get some really super awesome clean effects to really help your photos stand out. I personally love putting a lot of texture on my photos as it does act as a little bit of a quality help as well. But speaking of quality in photos, under the details table, if your photo needs to be a little bit more clear, you can also use sharpening, but also balancing with noise reduction as well to give it the best look. Meaning when you're upping your sharpening for a photo that is not the best quality, you also want to up the values of the noise reduction as well to really make it balanced out. Once you feel like you've finished all that, you can press OK and place your photo either on the far left or the far right or the middle, depending on where you want to put it on, on your already color corrected background. Keep in mind that you want to fill your photo in the thumbnail that people who are even watching on mobile can also see your face reactions. Otherwise, you're probably hurting yourself and might also get a few less clicks. Not to mention as well, you can also add in some outer glow with these settings here or even an inner glow just to add, of course, glow to the actual photo. Either way, these are just added ideas. But once you guys are done with that, it's on to text. With text, you basically have free reign to do really anything that you would like to do, where usually text and the color correction of your photos is how you can find consistency in your channel. That way, when people are actually looking at your channel, they can kind of feel and see that it's your video before they even read the title or even read the actual name of the channel. 
I personally won't be going over any crazy text effects in this video, but in another video, I do go over a lot of cool text effects for thumbnails that I do recommend you guys check out in the top right. Now, things to keep in mind, here are some of my favorite and best placements I believe your text can really sit in. Balancing your text on the opposite side of where your photo usually is, is definitely the most traditional way of placing it. Other awesome spots being near the bottom of the thumbnail, allowing room for either another face or some objects. And of course, a more fun and sporadic way of placing really fun phrases and words, something like this. And again, I want to reiterate, make sure your text is big enough for people to actually read, whether they're on mobile or a tablet or anything like that, because when you're looking at the thumbnail while designing it, just remember, it's going to be much, much smaller and sometimes even 20% of the actual size of what you're designing it in. Finally, going into texturing your thumbnails with speed lines or really cool fun glows, explosions, really anything that you really see fit for the thumbnail can really help add some really fun elements as well. When it comes to putting glows in your thumbnails, it's one of my favorite personal things to do. All you have to do is select a darker color that's on your canvas with a soft brush, click in a few spots. Personally, near face is one of my favorite places to actually click. Afterwards though, just change your blend mode from normal to linear dodge add, and you usually come out with a really cool super dope glow. Now, if the glow doesn't actually look great based on the color that you chose, you can still press Control U on your keyboard to pop up the hue and saturation table, where you can actually put the lightness and the hue to get a better glow that better fits the composition. Also, I cannot forget it, but adding strokes to your photos in the layer style settings can really help bring attention to things that you want people to see really, really quickly. So if you think a element or a person in the thumbnail is super important, I would definitely highlight it with a stroke. And with that, all the things that I went over pretty much in that exact order is how I break down my process when tackling a clean thumbnail for my clients. And now hopefully you as well. And with that being said, guys, that is the end of the video here today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys learned something. You can now go into Photoshop, have a little bit more confidence going into actually making your own thumbnails. And uh, yeah, so I did give you pretty much all of my tips. Of course, it's going to go through themes, game specific things you might just see around. Of course, keep your eye open, keep innovating, keep learning, keep trying. And uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like on the video. Comment down anything you want to see me do personally on this channel. Whether if it's like uh, anything, literally anything, let me know what you probably want to see. And uh, yeah, that's it. Talk to you guys later. Sister HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. I definitely said like freaking productive. Stay freaking productive, guys. <laughs> Much love. Later. Peace.